Yeah, here it is. Yeah. Okay, all right. Hello, everybody. I'm Nicolas Befour. I'm an assistant prof, uh, professor at Neoma Business School. I'm a member of an economist and a member of uh, the um, finance department of uh, Neoma. And I'm also the director of the chair of industrial bioeconomy of Neoma. Uh, just a short presentation of the chair. So our main question, our structuring question is how can the bioeconomy develop and contribute to the ecological transition, uh, considering that this contribution to the ecological transition is the key uh, to develop the social acceptability of the bioeconomy. We are the only social sciences chair in France uh, exclusively dedicated to the transition to the bioeconomy and we have uh, several uh, collaborations, especially in the European Center for Biotechnology and Bioeconomy, and especially with um, uh, Centrale Supélec. So thank you very much for inviting me and also to the Interreg project for in inviting me. And uh, so I'm, um, so I'm attached to the chair and we have also three other professors attached to the chair. We have one postdoc one doctor of students and one administrative assistant. And uh, so now the bioeconomy and microalgae. So microalgae is a hot topic in scientific fields and uh, there are strong techno-economic expectations as exposed in the two previous presentations, meaning that uh, actors uh, uh, things it's uh, I think it's very important to um, uh, to be part of this field because there will be strong econ strong economic opportunities. Uh, but microalgae economics, if I may say, is mostly unknown. Um, so it so moreover, microalgae is a subfield of the bioeconomy where it is not known how it interacts with other subfields. Uh, so the question is, what is the place of microalgae in the bioeconomy? And it appears that the issue, the issue of uh, the, or the, the entry point of value chain uh, could be a very interesting entry, but uh, we have uh, directly a problem, which is how to study value chains that do not yet exist. Um, so we, uh, we won't stop the presentation here because uh, I may have some answer for to, to provide. So what we do know about value chains is that um, to study these value chains, we need to identify alliances formed by actors all along the value chains. And these alliances involve um, uh, heterogeneous players such as startups, mid-sized company, universities, incumbents innovation platforms such as the, the, the companies such as Vito, for example, uh, and all these players are located in specific locations. And uh, these alliances target the uh, appropriation of, uh, in, of natural resources. Here it's quite clear we talk about microalgae, uh, about knowledge, knowledge maybe about uh, the different processes, but also market knowledge and so on and as also institutional resources. So it means that, what, what does it mean? Is institutional resources. It means to have access, for example, to the definition of a research topic in call for projects. It's also having the, uh, having, being able to influence the legislative framework and so on. So um, that's uh, the, the point of studying alliances. So how can we do it to, how can we study emerging value chains and the emergence of value chains? We could use, we can use a three steps uh, approach. In the first place, we may, we, we start by identifying the techno-economic context of the emergence of microalgae, then identify actors of the value chain, and then identify the shape of the value chains and actor strategies. So uh, it is based on the question of, is there an ideal type of value chains or a diversity of models? Meaning that if we have different types of value chains, we may have also different types of strategies, uh, different types of perceiving, different, different way of perceiving economic opportunities for innovation and so on. So here is the layout of my presentation. So uh, first, there is not one, but three bioeconomies 
and then I will highlight the microalgae knowledge production in the world, um, so some information about microalgae companies, and then uh, uh, some element of conclusions about the composition and recomposition of value chain uh, in, in the bioeconomy. And uh, so uh, the results here are preliminary results from a bibliometric study uh, in a project we carried out with uh, Central Supelec. Uh, with uh, Ryan uh, Benham, uh, uh, Ryan and Benham. So uh, yeah, okay, let's go. So not one, but three bioeconomy. So there are three bioeconomies. The first one is the biotech bioeconomy, uh, perceived as a sub uh, where uh, this type of bioeconomy is perceived as a subsector of the biotechnology industry, mostly through the development of uh, white biotech. Um, here, the idea is to uh, replace all typical processes uh, inherited from uh, um, the, the petrochemical industry by biotech processes. We, all, we then have the biorefinery, bioeconomy, which is the dominant one in Europe and mostly in the world, uh, which uh, is mainly structured around the tool of the biorefinery. And here, in terms of knowledge, it is not limited to biotech, but uh, it is um, oriented toward the use of different types of knowledge from chemistry, from cosmetics, and so on, which need to be um, unified by the constraint of the use of biomass. And we have here uh, different types of role of sustainability. We can discuss it later. And then we have a third one, which is the ecological bioeconomy. And here, the function of the bioeconomy is uh, to foster the transition to sustainability. So here, it's clearly to replace all the different uses by uh, sustainable uh, processes. And here, it's not just uh, the, the knowledge research, the, the, knowledge, the production of knowledge is not oriented only by the, the constraint of the use of biomass, but by uh, its oriented by the sustainable use of the biomass. And here, sustainability is the objective, and it's it's a constraint for new production modes. So it means also for exchanges and consumption, it's not contingent as in the biorefinery, bioeconomy. So regarding this, how can we, how can we position uh, microalgae um, regarding bioeconomy? So it's, uh, on the one hand, it's clear it's in biotech, bioeconomy, um, since we have all these reflections on the issue of uh, producing microalgae and also on GMOs and so on, but it's also linked to the biorefinery, bioeconomy. And these two types of bioeconomy are quite uh, compatible. And I think that the microalgae field is quite a, a, an illustration of how it's compatible. So we, uh, in terms of biorefinery, bioeconomy, we have a proposition of microalgae, so so-called microalgae refinery, uh, so I uh, just give it some references. Um, we also have um, issues or, or propositions regarding this use of microalgae to uh, being a pathway to make the circular bioeconomy sustainable, uh, meaning that uh, the use of microalgae allows to um, give value to waste coming from other productions from biorefinery. But on the other hand, this can be uh, perceived as a um, repetition of the history, because if you think to the development of the uh, oil-based refinery uh, in the 30s, uh, it was meant at the beginning. Uh, so uh, in the first place, uh, refineries were, main, were meant to produce um, fuels for cars. But since it was very um, costly and uh, we are with the low profitability due uh, to the large amount of waste and so on, this waste has been used to uh, replace already a uh, bio-based chemistry which was already existing. It, for example, we, we had uh, illustrations of, um, of chemicals made of lactic acid which has been replaced by oil-based um, molecules in order to increase the profitability of oil-based refineries. And uh, some authors and publications also see the development of microalgae as a tool to sustain uh, the development of the carbon capture use and storage because of this large amount of carbon. 
So now if we look at uh, the world of the bioeconomy, um, so the, there is this uh, very famous uh, pictures made, picture made by the Nova Institute, which is meant to highlight the potential of the, um, of the use of biomass. But I used to uh, look at it uh, in a different, under a different perspective. Of course, we have here a lot of promises and strong expectations, but it's also uh, actually uh, a uh, world of competition. For example, if you look here uh, in the left and here in the right, we have polyurethane and uh, they both came from different biomass and also different types of processes and so on. So we don't, we mostly have a world of uh, competition. So it means that uh, we may have different, it confirms the idea that we may mainly have different types of models of value chains that could, that could compete and then different types of opportunities and different ways of thinking the uh, economic models of uh, microalgae production. So now if we look at knowledge production in the world, uh, so th these are di directly results from a study carried, the study I was mentioning, um, sorry, legends are in French here. Uh, it's the evolution of patent uh, demand between 95 and 2017. And we see that there has been a strong peak after 2010 and a decrease. So it's, uh, clearly, it clearly highlights uh, what we call the promise cycle or expectation cycle. So we, we, we had strong expectations. We can see here which peaked here. And uh, it's clearly a sign of disappointment. It means that there has been a conflict between what was expected and what uh, microalgae production really showed. So uh, this needs to be further explored by a more qualitative inquiry. Uh, here we have uh, collaborations um, on the global period from 2013 to 2017. And we see that uh, these collaborations are uh, mostly uh, regionally linked. Uh, here, for example, in the bottom, we see that the th we have three French uh, universities, CEA, Ex Marseille University, and uh, um, Pierre and Marie Curie University, which collaborates a bit with University of California, which is quite also uh, uh, isolated because it doesn't have a lot of collaboration. And uh, here, uh, it's, we also see clearly that we have a limited number of uh, collaboration in the field. And uh, here, if we look at who is um, patenting, we see that it's mostly, uh, except uh, in the southeast of Asia, um, patenting in microalgae is mostly uh, the, uh, the activity of uh, firms. Uh, what we also see here is that we have a low uh, amount of uh, intra-country uh, collaboration. So it means that collaborations in the microalgae field are clearly located uh, into countries. So the, here it means that we may not have strong um, internationalization of uh, microalgae value chains. So uh, it's a uh, quite uh, coherent with the idea of making a indirect project based in a specific uh, regional area, as you can see here. Uh, then if I go here, we see uh, here we have uh, microalgae companies and we see in the first place that, um, of course, we have Fermentag, which is the top 10 uh, deponent uh, of um, uh, appliance, sorry, for, for patents. And just after we have Rocket, which is not specialized in microalgae, but uh, is uh, an agro-industry incumbent. And uh, then we see in all these, um, uh, in, uh, in this top 10 of patent applicants, that we have a strong diversity of, um, of uh, types of firms. So it uh, really confirms this idea of alliances which are quite diversified. Um, so yeah. And now I will conclude. So we have a strong knowledge production dynamics. Um, oh, sorry, they are, they are still French in my presentation. Uh, and so we have also a strong diversity of uh, implied uh, firms. 
So it means that we are we may be on the right way to look at the emergence of these value chains. And there is also the, there is a question here is how to make roadmaps effective. Um, because roadmaps are a tool to uh, draw vision for the future. It means that uh, these uh, roadmaps will will uh, present a way of uh, imagining uh, value chains. And then uh, you can plead, plead uh, pledge sorry, uh, to have one the one best model of value chain. Or you can also pledge the idea of having different types of uh, model of value chains model depending on the different types of products and also types of innovation you are targeting. So I think it's a, a quite different way of uh, presenting and narrating the value chains. And uh, I think it could be uh, a good way, uh, uh, a topic to further. And um, there are some limits of the bibliometric study. It doesn't. It don't show. It doesn't show. Sorry, if firms are uh, already start uh, already started to produce microalgae, and for which purpose they are uh, producing microalgae? Because we have this. Uh, I saw it. Uh, I made this uh, a study close to this one on PLA, and we have strong. Um, public announce on and public claims on the development of products, but then the, there are strong issues on st on starting the production. So it does, it, it is it isn't shown in the bibliometric study. So future steps are the following: first, there is uh, we need to systematic uh, to, to lead a systematic exploration of the top ten applicants uh, alliances. To determine which models and which types of strategies they are adopting. So, to identify strategies and, of course, to identify opportunities. Thank you very much for your attention. And here you have uh, the, the, the logo of our funder, so Neoma Business School, the um, city of the, the, the Greater Reims, the agglomeration of Reims, the Paris Reims Foundation, and the Chamber of Commerce. Uh, Marne en Champagne and also the logo of the European Center of Biotechnology and Bioeconomy. Thank you very much. Thank you, Nicolas.